here we are at a completely different place. I don't think you would know what that majestic looking building behind me. But that is the state capital of Idaho, which means I'm in Idaho, the state of Idaho, my first time I've ever been in Idaho. And I'm in Boise, the state capital of Idaho. Boise means trees. It's actually comes from the name Bois, which is the French word for trees. This is the town and the city of trees. There's the rotunda building of the capital. It's over 100 years old. And I, as I travel around the world, as you know, I want to get as many different places and as, as we're unpacking the Quran. And we've been unpacking concerning the problems with relevancy. Is the Quran relevant for today? We've already looked at chapter 4. We looked at verse 3 of chapter 4. We looked at verse 11. Uh, verse 3 says that a man can have up to four wives. Uh, verse 11 says that a, a girl gets half the inheritance as her brother when the father dies. Uh, we then moved on to chapter 4, verse 24, where we talked about those women that are permitted for a man are that which their right hand possesseth. That means as many concubines above and beyond the four wives that it uh, refers to in verse 3. Uh, we went to chapter 4, verse 34, where it says a man can beat his wife. Uh, then we went on to, and we talked about chapter 2, verse 282, uh, which says that a woman gets half the testimony in court. And then two, chapter 2, verse 223, where it says that a woman's uh, wife is a tilt for her husband, and a man may plow his wife anytime he wants, referring to marital rape. We ended then with chapter 4, verse, and this is the one of the hardest ones, chapter 4, verse 230. Now, I'm going to go back, before we move on away from the Quran, and before we move on away from these two chapters, I want to go back and talk about chapter 4, verse 24. Remember I said in chapter 4, verse 24, and I referred to the fact uh, that that uh, forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hand possesses. I talked about that, that men can have women who their right hand possesses. That means men, women that are caught as slaves of war. I want to continue on with that same verse because there's something else that comes out here. Let me read it to you. As you continue on with that verse, it then says, Thus has Allah ordained for you, all others are lawful, provided you seek with maher from your property, desiring chastity, not committing illegal sexual intercourse. So with those of whom you have enjoyed sexual relations, give them their mahir as prescribed. But if after a mahir is prescribed, you would grain mutually, there is no sin on you. What in the world is that talking about? This is what we call muta marriages, or nika muta, or nika misyar. These are the names that are Arabic. This is a, a temporary marriage uh, that is prescribed in the Quran itself. And the whole reason for it is that when men were traveling, especially when they went with Muhammad on these raids, and they went to other cities, they left their wives behind at their homes, they needed to have sexual release. And so they were permitted to go to a town and it, providing, and it gives a, there's a whole litany of what, uh, of, of laws in the traditions concerning, and, and the Sharia law concerning what prescribed a woman that was legitimate. First and foremost, that woman had to be a Muslim. Secondly, she could not be married at that time. She either had to be uh, before marriage or she had to be a widow. And thirdly, she could also have been a al a woman who is either from the Jews or the Christians. But what was fascinating is, look and see what the Quran says. It says, as long as you give your mahir, what does mahir mean? In Arabic, that is the bridal price. That means the payment that you must give for this woman. It's from your property, desiring chastity, not committing illegal sexual, not committing illegal sexual intercourse. So, with those whom you enjoyed sexual relations, if you've enjoyed sex with these women, give them their mahir as prescribed. You must pay for this. And according to Islamic law, the payment, the marriage that it's referring to, must be anywhere from three days to ninety years. It depends on you. You decide how long that marriage is going to be. And these are called temporary marriages. Nika. Muta or Nika Mishar. Muta are the ones that the Shiites do. The Mishar are the ones that the Sunnis. Now today, if you talk to a Muslim, and I'm sure the Muslims who are watching this, they do not agree with this. They get upset when you bring it up. They say this is not legitimate. But the problem is right there in the Quran. It's not legitimate for many Muslims today because they live in the West. Because as you are trying, to, you are starting to guess, this is basically prostitution. 
This is giving an injunction that men, when they're away from their wives, as long as they give payment, the mahir, to the woman, uh, they can therefore then have temporary marriages that may last, in some cases, only for three hours. But according to many uh, law informants today, it should be at least, the least amount should be three days or 90 years. And you give the amount of money, the mahir, depending on what you've agreed upon. The Quran is very clear upon that. So here is another reference. Is this legitimate today? And would you not call this prostitution? Legalized prostitution, in this case, legalized by the Quran itself. I would suggest yes. Thank God we don't have this in the Bible. Thank God we don't go around and leaving our wives behind. Because what does it say about the marriage? What does it say about the sanctity of marriage? What does it say about the marriage vows? Of which I'm still looking for, because that you don't get in this book. You only get it in the Bible. Folks, this is not le legitimate for today. It's not relevant for today. Just another example, looking at women in this book, when you look and see what it says, I'm so glad we don't have to worry about this or have to defend it. I leave it up to you, those of you who are watching. Get a discussion going. Let's talk about it. Let's see how you can engage with it. Write in the comments below. Meanwhile, back here in Idaho, here in Boise, over the Capitol, just yet another example of how irrelevant this book is for me for you and especially if you're a woman for marriage today tomorrow yesterday anywhere anytime any place god bless you this is jay here in boise idaho over now